Matt, you, you wrote a great piece over the weekend on NJ.com. I love the idea. I love the way your, your mind works when it comes to, to this type of stuff with football. Andrew Luck up and retires out of nowhere, or at least we thought it was out of nowhere. I guess if you're around the Colts, they're, they're not necessarily super shocked. But you said, hey, what a great spot this could be for Eli Manning to land, to finish out his career on a team that actually has a chance to get to a Super Bowl in, in this season or the next season, as opposed to the Giants, where he's eventually going to lose his job to Daniel Jones, who's the, you know, the first-round pick, number six overall. Uh, he's, he's looking great in the preseason. And, and the minute Eli does something bad, people are going to start booing him and calling for the next guy. So this would be a great idea. I love it. Yeah, Harry, I don't think that it will happen, but the three of us lived this back in 2016 when the Eagles traded Sam Bradford to the Minnesota Vikings seven days before the season opener. And and, and listen, you watch Daniel Jones in practice, and he looks pro-ready. And you read the reports from Arizona and Washington, and you get the sense based on what we saw in the preseason games that Jones is the most pro-ready of any of these quarterbacks, right? So if the goal here is to win football games, and that's all that matters, and if John Mara, the Giants owner, cares about giving Eli Manning a proper send-off to his career, I don't know that there's a better situation right now than pairing him behind one of the game's best offensive lines with Frank Reich as the head coach, a team that won Super Bowls with his brother at the helm with a roster that is built to win right here, right now. And the Giants, if you would trade him on Manning to the Colts or anywhere else, you clear the path for Daniel Jones to start week one. You eliminate the distraction of when will Eli Manning be benched? When will Daniel Jones start? And everybody moves on. And the season rolls on with Daniel Jones here. I don't think that's how it plays out, guys. I think that everything is going to hinge on the first two weeks of the season. If the Giants are competitive against the Cowboys and beat the Bills, then Eli's going to play week three against Tampa Bay, and until the Giants are out of playoff contention, maybe even longer. But if he struggles, if the Giants are 0-2 and it's ugly and you lose to Buffalo at home, I think there's a good chance Daniel Jones is the week three starter in Tampa Bay. Wow. Yeah, that's earlier than we thought. We thought it was going to take until Arizona. What about the no trade clause, though? Let's start there. Have you heard anything at all? And I know that he publicly wouldn't come out in front of a microphone or camera, Matt, at least at this point of the season, and say, yeah, I'm open to being traded. But have you heard anything at all in the back channels that would even indicate that a no trade clause would not be a problem? Yeah, yeah, Eitan, you look at this, and of course the no trade is there. But my thought, if you're the Giants and you are ready, and you're head coach Pat Shermer, and you're ready to turn the fortunes of your career and your franchise over to Daniel Jones, and you approach Eli and you say, listen, you might be replaced within two weeks. Or here's the scenario of going to a team that's ready to win a Super Bowl now. I don't know that Manning would sign up for two weeks and then the indignity of being benched just like he was here a couple of seasons ago. And, and, and it really angered the fan base and, and it really turned the franchise on its ear in a way that I don't know that ownership has really fully recovered from. So that's a conversation that would obviously have to occur. But knowing Eli Manning and knowing the fact that he's been on record before of saying that he, it's not his job to be a mentor – I got to believe he would at least entertain the option of going there to start versus being a placeholder for a couple of weeks here in East Rutherford. Hey, Matt, we're talking to Matt Lombardo, NJ.com, uh, covers the Giants and the NFL. Um, who is the biggest proponent uh, or advocate or uh, champion inside that organization for Eli Manning and keeping him here until he, you know, he just uh, uh, retires? I mean, is it the ownership or it's, it can't be Pat Shermer, right? Yeah, Harry, I think that it, this is John Mara on down. It's Mara, it's Gettleman. They believe that Eli Manning gives them the best chance to win. But then you talk to people around Pat Shermer and you read between the lines of things that Shermer has said all offseason, dating back even to Friday night against the Bengals, what he said afterwards, that when Daniel Jones is ready to play and he will be ready and we still have a week or two before the Dallas Cowboy game, you start to get the sense that in a perfect world with a different owner and with a different general manager and a different organization that Daniel Jones would be Pat Shermer's choice to start the opener. Again, I don't think it plays out that way, and I think that Shermer is, is going along with the plan for as long as the Giants are competitive. But I think that if he had his druthers, Daniel Jones would be the guy who starts week one. I think he's chomping at the bit to get a look at Daniel Jones as the uh, quarterback of his franchise. Matt, you mentioned the send-off that would be Eli Manning going to Indianapolis and 
the proper way, I guess, for him to end his career with all the things surrounding him. What happens if, in fact, he does get pulled? If it's week three against the Bucks, right? Or if it's against the Cardinals in week seven, I believe. Whatever it may be, what's the send-off like then when Eli Manning gets yanked, still a member of this football team, and kind of has to ride out the remainder of the season while everybody watches Daniel Jones? Yeah, I think, Aton, it comes down to this. A, it can't happen at MetLife Stadium. It can't happen at home. I think the first start for Daniel Jones has to be on the road, away from any sort of acrimony, any sort of uproar from the portion of the fan base that still believes that Eli Manning is the top quarterback. I think it has to happen in an away game. And I, I think that it's going to be the type of situation where, at that point, Eli Manning is not going to have a choice but to be a good soldier, be a good mentor, and be a good leader behind the scenes. And, and the Giants better hope that Daniel Jones is as advertised and plays as well in the regular season as he's played in the preseason and looked in practice because it's a lot easier overall to start with Eli Manning week one and go to Jones when Manning struggles than it is to bench Eli out of the show. Jones looks like he doesn't belong, and then you have to go back to Eli Manning. That's a disaster, and that's where I think, and I wrote this on Monday, that John Mara understands the politics of what could be an ugly quarterback situation at some point. Pat Shermer only cares about winning football games, and I, I don't know that there is a disconnect between the two, but if there is, that would be, in my opinion, reading between the lines, where that disconnect might be. All right, last one for Matt Lombardo, NJ.com. And also, Already? He's also a gentleman golfer, too, but we'll tell you more about that next week. Well, hold on. He's I, I've got join a text weekly. about the, uh, somebody getting a putter back. Maybe we should throw a golf-related text out at Matt before he gets out of here. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Okay. Why don't you ask your question? Then okay, we'll I just got one real quick one on the Giants in general. Forget about the quarterback situation. Truly, as you've been watching them all through camps and, and, and you know preseason, what kind of season do you think they're going to have? Yeah, Harry, this is going to come down to the Giants' defense and especially the middle of the defense. Teams are going to be able to exploit the Giants at some linebackers. Alec Ogletree, who was their lowest-graded defender last year, terrible in coverage even though he had five interceptions. Uh, they don't really have a great option next to him. They don't have much of a pass rush other than Dexter Lawrence, who's looked pretty dominant, and O'Shane Zyman as the third-round pick. Uh, this is a defense that could surrender 28, 30 points a game, and they're going to have to outscore teams 37 to 35 or 30. 34-31, and without that deep threat like Odell Beckham Jr. on the outside, you're basically relying on Saquon Barkley, Evan Ingram, and Sterling Shepard to be your best receiving options. And I just don't know how that's a winning formula in today's NFL. Now, if Jones starts and plays well, then that's a game changer because we've seen across the league young quarterbacks who play at a high level make all the difference and can change the trajectory of a franchise. But I wrote I think they have a chance to be 5-11, and and I think that based on what I've seen, Six and ten, seven and nine is probably their absolute ceiling if everything goes their way. Hmm. All right. So, how familiar are you with the Beninardi putter? Oh, that's an expensive one, a custom one. Well, yeah. I'm just, I'm curious though. You painted Lombardo as some master Michelangelo on the course. I'm curious. No, I said he's a gentleman golfer. I, I heard amazing, outstanding, award-winning golf. I've never played with him. Is that right? Yeah. You've never we brought really Harry out to the club? Here, we're, we're supposed to be playing, playing together soon. Oh, where, where's my yeah. invite? You know, See, I'm about see, to join a very powerful country club. Yeah. You'd think that somebody out here would want to be my friend. You know, I know people Jeez. over there, and I can have that blocked. Do you know that? I, I don't know, man. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, They've uh, got to approve of you. I've, I've already there. met some of the approved people, uh -huh. you know? Ask him uh, whatever the tweet is. What he, uh, I, that's it. Oh, yeah? This guy says, off topic, after sending in my Beninardi putter for restoration back in June, I finally get it back this week for some cool fall golf. And I wonder, A, what putter are you currently using, Lombo? And B, will either or both Harry and I get a chance to see you use it? Uh, I've been using a Scotty Cameron. It's one of the new putters. <laughs> That's an putters. expensive one, too. Essentially essentially Tiger Woods's putter. I found it used at a Golf Galaxy for about 120 bucks, and it's made all the difference in my game. I went from putting 36, 37 times to now I'm down to about 29 on a good day. So uh, anytime you guys want to go out, I just need one. I have a country club to invite you guys to, like uh, Harry over there. I'll bring the cigars if that helps. Wait, so you're not even at a club, and, no. you're, and you're not even inviting Harry to the municipal course you go whack balls around at? 
That is shameful. I, hey, I, I didn't think he would be on a step foot on a muni course. I thought that he was country club or bust. Maybe I played a muni course on Saturday up in Connecticut that was a Donald Ross course. Fantastic. Nice. So I'm playing Donald Ross course tomorrow in Boston, the George Wright course. I'm excited. Nice. Wait, I, I thought they got that out. guy out of Miami. He still has golf clubs or uh, courses. <laughs> Who? <laughs> oh, Stephen Ross. Yeah, you're talking about the oh, Dolphins okay. owner. That guy okay. lives in New York anyway, I think. Yeah, I thought yeah. he owned a couple of courses. He's developed half of Manhattan and Brooklyn. <laughs> 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 All right, Lombo, look forward to doing this on a weekly basis starting next week. What, Tuesday? Is that what we're doing? Tuesdays. Every Tuesday I'll come on. We'll talk about the Giants. We'll talk about the NFL, break down the big storylines. I'm just glad to be colleagues with you guys again. I, th I thought we were friends, but now it's great to be colleagues as well. Absolutely, yes, and man. speaking of golf, we, we have a, a great company that you'll be working with that we'll tell everybody about next week as well, okay? Sounds like a plan. All awesome, right, brother. Thank you. Matt Lombardo on the Lighthouse Insurance guest line. Oh, now I got what you meant.